Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage, and we're holding our monthly tech meet today, and we will be addressing air conditioning issues, charging, uh, evacuating, recharging, and pressures, and all that kind of stuff on a Silver Shadow 2. Today, we're going to look at AC. This is a Silver Shadow 2 that has, it's uh, 79, right? Yeah. Uh, it has the automatic air conditioning, which came out in uh, technically 1976 with the Cornish and the Camar. Uh, which is supposed to be automatic. Um, so rather than the earlier cars where you would manually change the temperature as it got cooler, you'd have to reduce it, change the amount of air, and then also the fan speeds, this is supposed to do it automatically. And the key word is supposed to. Uh, so air conditioning systems work with Freon. Uh, there are three basic types. Uh, there's R12, which is the old school type, it's been around forever. This is for automotive, just by the way. There's the R134A, which came out, I believe, in 95. Something that is less damaging to the ozone when it gets vented. Uh, and then there's another one, it's, uh, I think it's a 1234 or YZX or something like that, that they use in modern cars. Um, the system, these two systems can be converted. This one has been converted. Uh, and one way you can tell on your car is the hoses are totally different for charging it, but the fittings for the R12 are pretty small. They're actually a 3 8 uh, I forget, pipe thread or something like that. And then on the, the 134, so this is so that you can figure out what's on your car. So the 134 has these really big fittings, and it has these locking uh, adapters so they don't pop off, they don't screw on, they've got shutoff valves right at the valve so you lose less when you disconnect it. Um, and uh, they work a little bit differently. The R12 systems, which have been around for, I don't know, since they started putting them on in the 50s, uh, until about 95, I think the manufacturers had to go to 134. Uh, it works great. It's, um, and the systems are designed for that, the older cars. Now the 134, the modern cars, the air conditioning works great with the 134, but when you put it in an R12 car, you're going to reduce performance. Uh, not only does it not work as well, but it requires less Freon. So typically, this car would take three and a half to four pounds to fully charge with R12. You're going to do 75% of that, typically. It all depends on your pressure readings. Uh, when you the, say the performance is being affected, the cooling performance or the driving performance? The cooling performance, performance is less. Uh, and typically I notice that it's mostly at slow speeds. Once you get up to speed, like on the freeway or you're cruising 50 miles an hour, it blows great ice cold. But when you come to a stop and you're in stop and go traffic, it, 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 minim it reduces a bit. I don't know if you notice that, but yeah. yeah. And there's not much you can do about that unless you convert the whole system to 134. And the cost of the R12, which is still available, is exorbitant. But it's not as much as the newest stuff. So it typically costs me five times as much as it cost for the 134. You cannot buy that. You used they used to have those little one-pound cans, which you can find at Pep Boys or any auto parts store now. For the 134, they even have little kits so you can charge it. Uh, you can't. It's been illegal to sell those in R12 since '95. It's been illegal. That doesn't mean you can't find them, but the problem with those little cans is, I remember working on these things back in the '70s and '80s. The cans you just unscrew and they just vent. And the whole idea behind this recycling system is to reduce venting because that it's damaging to the ozone so this it, machine here is kind of old uh, you can't buy these anymore I don't believe that contain the R12 and the 134 uh, so it has two cans in there and it stores Freon uh, you buy the I buy the Freon in 30 pound cans which I store someplace else and then I fill it so when you hook up to a car, we'll just hook up to the car, we'll pull out the Freon. What happened, just so you know, what happened to Keith is it started venting. So he was driving and he heard this horrible noise with the air conditioning on. It went off when he turned the air conditioning off. 
and there was like smoke coming out from under the hood. So he opened the hood and it was just blowing around here. He thought, he, he wasn't sure what it was, but uh, I, I just thought maybe, because it only happened with the AC on, I thought maybe there's a, there's a relief valve in here that's supposed to allow it to vent it so it doesn't explode anything. Because the, the system pressures, high side, typically you want to run them right around 2, 250, no more. Uh, but that blow-off valve is supposed to come off and you know, release it 400. So that just made me think that, you know, that, that we got too much pressure. So I'm going to show you how we're going to, first of all, so I can get a baseline, I'm going to pull the Freon out, if there's any Freon left in it. So if you notice, on the machine and the hoses, you've got a blue side and a red side. So... The way air conditioning works, the basics are, it pushes Freon through a small hole. And it's under high pressure on the one side. And as it goes through that small hole, it, it, the pressure goes way down and that causes your cooling effect. And that, it's, that goes through an expansion valve, which is designed to adjust according to temperatures in the evaporator. Evaporator is in this box, and what it does is blows air over, it's like a little radiator, or heater core, which is a small radiator also. So it blows air over this evaporator that gets ice cold, because right before the evaporator is the expansion valve, and it goes right into the evaporator, that low pressure drop, it blows air over it, it will ice up, and then the expansion valve is supposed to back off. To, to prevent it from icing off. And it blows the cold air, and then when it comes out, it's sucked back into the compressor and then pumped through the compressor out to the condenser, which is in front of the radiator. Now the condenser is like a radiator too, but instead of pressure drop, it's supposed to turn that, let me back up a second. When the, when the Freon goes through the expansion valve, it turns from a liquid to a gas. That's key. So once it comes out of the evaporator, you've got to make it into a liquid again. So what they do is they pump it through here under high pressure and uh, it, it, this cools it. When it goes to high pressure, it gets hot, just so you know. And then it cools it down out here and it goes through a dryer, which is, it's supposed to take any moisture that comes out of it and it's also a filter. And then it goes back into the expansion valve to, to drop pressure again. So you have the two, two sides of the pressure system. So blue is the low side, the cold side, and red is the, the hot side and the high side. So these, these couplings, which I don't know aftermarket what you can find, they're like an air hose fitting. They've got the, the sleeve you pull back. They've got a shutoff valve here. Somebody backed off too hard. That should be shut off. Oh, no, that's, that's shut off. So what that does is shut off this hose. When it's backed off, it's shut off. So... Sorry about that. So the blue, the low side is over here. There's one more component in here on this system. It is called a POA valve. I don't know what that stands for. Sorry. Pressure something. And that is supposed to kind of control the pressures coming back from the evaporator. So I'm going to screw these valves in so that it's... issue here. Trying to figure out why it won't clip on there. There it is. Now this fitting's a little loose here. That's suspect right away. So I don't know if anybody watched these, but the pressure's changed on that. So I'm going to turn this machine on. It's kind of noisy. So what we're going to do, this machine will hook, turn the hoses on so it can pull it out, and I'm going to press recovery. This tells me to connect the hoses, which I'm a step ahead, and then we're going to press start. So now it's pulling it out. Oh, soon. So it's suck It's actually withdrawing that Freon, and this will tell. I'm sorry. 
Yes, it showed 90 pounds. So that static pressure. Yes. Well, it's because it's not on. It'll even out. And that static pressure, that shows a pretty good charge usually. Um, so it, this will take a while.